אורח נפלא יש לנו היום באולפן, המאסטרו אנדרש שיף, שלום אנדרש. שלום אריק. מה שלומך? How is your Hebrew incidentally? It's not non-existent, it should be. You said few words in Yiddish. Yiddish I know from German, yes. You said, no, no, but you said about somebody, Punim, you said he doesn't have a Punim, you said he has a Punim. Yes, I know Punim and Ganef and all those. He's very important. You mentioned Punim about a friend of us who passed away, a pianist who mm. knew Bartok very well. Yes. You know whom I mean? Yes, George Chandor. You say George. Well, George. Yeah, but everybody... George in Hungarian. Yeah, yeah, sure. George. <laughs> sure. Uh, everybody called him Georgie, but he yeah. told me, I don't call me George. He called me George. Okay, George. Yeah. And uh, George Chandor used to play this Bartok concerto number three, is soldier march is played they don't but on and we had a lot of argument about it and i would like yeah. you to solve this argument but not before we show to our viewers uh, your performance mm. of this concerto from the proms <laughs>
Andra sang, so delighted the way you played it, so marvelously, like some song in the morning. Can you just do it the way you did it in the performance? Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, this is one of Bartok's last compositions. So it is a swan song. It's a farewell to, to life. He was very ill in America, in great poverty under terrible conditions. And, and it's, he says in, there is a wonderful book by his son Peter Bartok called My Father. And, and Bartok says to his son that I am really sorry to have to leave this earth with a full suitcase. And that, that says it all. So if you play this, uh, I, I also met George Shandor, and, and uh, he came, I was playing this at Carnegie Hall, and he came to the dress rehearsal. Yeah. And he, was, he was very rude to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. He says, okay, you and Annie Fisher, you, yeah. you don't understand this yeah. music. It should be played. Yeah. And, and I cannot. I just cannot buy that. I'm so glad you say that because he said, <laughs> I'm Hungarian, I speak the language, besides, I knew Bartok, Bartok told me how to do it, I performed it, I m may have performed it even the world premiere or something like that. He did like the that. world he premiere. He did the world yeah. premiere, so he's got the authority. And he said to me, you understand nothing, that's what he said. And he loved to have a fight, you know, e either yeah. in the green room or with a lot of people around. Yeah. And I said to him, no, 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 you are wrong. And he said, no, you are wrong, you don't you understand. Uh, and he told me that this is a soldier song, Hungarian yes, soldier verbunkos. song. He told me that. Verbunkos. Uh, verbunkos, which verbunkos, is a, yeah. when, when they are recruiting yeah. soldiers to the yeah. army, and then they they play So it should style. be played. Tidam, pabom. Can you a do? A verbunkos is like in Kodai's Har Janos. Yeah. Yeah. This is a verbum kosh, not this. <laughs> Sorry. You know, the, the, the contradiction of the text is amazing because, on one hand, Bartok writes for the piano solo here mezzo forte. That's yeah. what Shandor says. It's mezzo forte. He says, Why you all played piano while it is mezzo forte written by Bartok? But then I reply to him, Look at the accompaniment. The and, accompaniment. And, uh, Tell us what is it about. And Bartok had no time to finish the orchestration, and, and a lot of the dynamic markings are not by him, but by Tibor Shirley. For oh, yeah, example, yeah, 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 in, yeah, the, yeah. in the orchestra score, this is marked piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I always ask the orchestra to play this pianissimo, sure. like a forest murmur. Sure, sure. And you know, it's wonderful. I was in. Waldesrauschen. Waldesrauschen, yes. Uh, um, many years I went to the Marlboro Festival in Vermont and we were staying in a cottage in the forest and waking up at six o'clock in the morning I heard these bird calls you know yeah. and these are the exact birds in the second movement of, of this concerto. I have some beautiful story for you I heard the grandmother of this bird when I was in the same cottage yeah. in Marlboro. Yeah. Yeah. The cycle of nature. And Bartok spent the summers there in Vermont. I know, so, I know. So it is all it all all hangs together. And, but and, and if it is a verbunkos, how come the accompaniment is so delicate with a pizzicato? Look, a verbunkos as is you are recruiting for the army. It cannot be also in three, four time. Oh, there yeah. is no verbunkos in, in, in triple time. But when you argue with uh, George Sandor, you always lose. You, you cannot win upon him. No. We, but shall, we shall meet again. Bless, bless his memory, but now we <laughs> don't have to argue with him. Can you play it once again in your wonderful mm. morning? This is also very much about homesickness. Is it sad? Very sad. 
terribly. Visited and, uh, um, yes, and, and also, funnily enough, it reminds me in atmosphere of, of the last Mozart concerto, which... Uh, Swan song. It's a Swan terribly song. sad piece. Swan song. Yes. Mm. Last farewell. Yeah. Um, you met Bartok? No, I wish I, I did, but I'm, I'm an old guy, but too young for that, because Bartok died in 1945, I was born in 1953. But you met Kodai? Kodai I met, yes. <laughs> that was very funny, because uh, he was an old man already. But he had this, this method of solfege. Yeah, sure. And so I, I was at a concert with my mother. I was maybe six years old, but I was already studying music and solfege. So I went up to Kodai at the interval and asked for an autograph. And he had a very high voice. He had a voice like that, like no. drums. <laughs> yeah. He said, can you, can you do solfege? Okay. And I said, the little guy trembling, yes, I can. And so he, he notated a few bars of music on a piece of paper, and I had to, to sing it in, in solfege, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol. And uh, only if I could do it, then he gave me an autograph. Those were the days in Budapest. You had Kodai. The memory of Bartok was still in the air. The glorious yes. tradition. So many conductors, performers. Tell us some names, Hungarian names. Well, uh, there was Leo Weiner, the great pedagogue, but on, of conductors there was Fritz Reiner, there, there was uh, George Scholti, there was Antal Dorati, there was Eugene Ormandy. Uh, all, all Jewish. Well, unfortunately, all Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> they were not I nice guys? See, you didn't I like don't them? see a single goy there. I see. So why do you say unfortunately? No, this is being cynical. <laughs> uh, because I say unfortunately because today in Hungary they like to boast about yes, Hungarian performance. And then, then they tell us this list and also the same list about mathematicians and and. Yeah. and physicists and uh, scientists, and there is not a single non-Jew among them. I understand that you made a legal divorce between your homeland and yourself. Yes, unfortunately, the, in the present day, the government and the Hungarian society is terribly, not just anti-Semitic, but it also the way they, they treat the gypsies and the, the, their, um, their media laws and uh, also talking about uh, the lost territories after World War I, that they want to get it back. So these are terrible tendencies, and I, I you know, I just voiced my opinion. In, and you are in not the... afraid? I'm not afraid, but I'm afraid to, to go back to Hungary. It's also not just out of fear, but I'm very angry with Hungary, honestly. Also, also with the Jewish population there who don't have the guts to to speak up. They just keep quiet or they, they look the other way because it's more comfortable. But let's return to all these great conductors, Omandi, Scholti, they all had Jewish names. Originally, yeah. Scholti was called Stern, yeah. Dorati was called Deutsch, yeah. and Ormandi was called Blau. Yeah, Eugene Blau. Yes, and, uh, and, that, and even so, this shows that even in the golden time, like in the around 1900, there was always enough anti-Semitism there, and the Jews felt safer if 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 they didn't have a Jewish sounding name, because if you are called uh, Bernstein or Grünberg or Rosenzweig, then they immediately know who you are. So they changed it to a very Hungarian sounding name, like Ormandi. Yeah. Ormandy, Eugene Blau, was the yeah. boyfriend, incidentally, of my former uh, piano teacher is in Israel, Ilona Vince. You met her? I met her. She was already very, very old, but I'm very glad that I met her. And delightful And I'm lady. sure that you found many common friends. Or... Yes, because one of my main mentors was Shandor Weg, the violinist and oh, conductor. Sure. And Shandor Weg used to have a piano trio with... Uh, 
Ilona Vince and, yeah, sure. and, and her husband. Sure, I studied with story. him as well, yeah. Sandoveg in Basel. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Would you like to play for us some Bartok piece? With a real Hungarian accent, mm -hmm. where the language is in the sound. I play a children's piece, which is a. Uh, we have the. This is very sad about. Um, mm. Isn't it about somebody who stole a horse and uh, <laughs> is now in prison? No, this some? is another one. Is this is, this a, is another one? Similar. So these are for children, and this is Chillagok, Chillagok, about the stars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let yeah. the stars shine and then yeah. show me the way yeah, to yeah. my lost beloved. Yeah. And uh, do, do you remember the one who stole the horse? Or yeah, the, that is uh, Fehir Lasso. Yeah. Fehér László lovat lopott, a fekete habok the stars with uh, what is name Fehr Laszlo? Fehr Laszlo. Uh, Ilona Fehr, another... Yeah, Fehr Hungarian. means yeah, yeah, white. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, <laughs> why I, I, I just mix the two of them, because mm -hmm. two of them are sad. Very sad. And, and two of them has got this Hungarian accent, uh, always Igen, Igen. Igen, Igen. Igen, is, uh, Igen. Uh -huh. The prosody is always, the accent is on the beginning of the, of the word. But and, and luckily, you know, we are very lucky that we have wonderful recordings of Bartok playing the piano. Oh, yeah. Because if you would look at the written paper, you would you see this. You would play it like a good student. Yeah. <laughs> One, two. Uh. And then Bartok plays something like. The two hands never together, and, and he, he plays parlando, speaking yeah. way. And it is like this is the best example of music and language being connected. And I am sure if we had recordings of Beethoven playing or Mozart playing, exactly. we would come to similar conclusions because our musical notational system is very good, but it's not perfect. <laughs> you know, Andras, when you said parlando, I loved it so much because I always thought that cantando, you make yourself more beautiful. Hmm. But in parlando, you look into the eyes That's and right. you tell the truth. Yes. You don't pretend to be beautiful. You hmm. pretend to say the truth. What happened to this guy? He stole a horse? He stole a horse and then they put him in jail. And that's all. To it's me, enough. Uh, we don't know how how long that, <laughs> how long he was in jail or what. But those days there was still the death penalty, but not for stealing a horse. Can you play for us another children's song by Bartok? One by uh, one, so marvelously. Maybe one with some something happiness. Heavy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
This is a funny song. Hungarian is a funny language because either you say igen, 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 yeah. igen, migen, yeah. or else you change the meter every bar. How it is here is one, two, three, four, yeah, one, and, two, three. No, one, two, three. Besit nap a templomba, and then they say ihaja, chuhaja. It is a, <laughs> so uh, the meter change uh, two yeah. bars in four. And... So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. Yeah. That's funny. The uh, 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 Brahms variation in D major also changed yeah. meter, and it sounds mm -hmm. so Hungarian. Yes, of, of, often, you know, Brahms, of course, when Brahms and Liszt wrote Hungarian dances or rhapsodies, they are paraphrasing the gypsy music. Or Verbunkosch as well? Yes, but mostly, mostly gypsy music that they heard in the restaurants when you went to Budapest and then the gypsy comes to your table and it's... Uh, 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 <laughs> So, this is not folk music, <laughs> but it has its certain charm. With a cymbalom? Yes, and yes. Uh, With a cymbalom and the bass, and, but you, the main person is the primash, the violinist. Hungarian? Performers, conductors, pianists mm -hmm. are different. They are different creatures. Are they? I think so. Well, I cannot say that. You can. <laughs> um, they are Central European, very disciplined yeah. on one hand, and kind of crazy on the other hand. Yes, could be. Crazy, yes, but very disciplined. And, and so it's important that whatever happened after w World War II and communism and the and the Moscow connection, but the Vienna connection is much more important because it's much nearer and, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Habsburg times, they are much more dominant. Mm. Andras, we mentioned so many Hungarian names, but we have to mention also Andre Haidu. Do you know the guy? Very well, yes. M wonderful man composer, musician. Uh, I met him here in Israel because he has been living here for a long time, so I didn't know him in Hungary. You know, he made uh, um, his Milky Way in the tradition of Bartok, just taking children's songs mm -hmm. and arrange it either for two hands or four hands. And I would like to ask you to join me or me to join you in playing a seder, a song that Andre Haidu arranged it in a very f wonderful playful uh, way for four hands. Would you like to do it? It is the greatest pleasure. Sight reading? Yes. A challenge. Yes.
Andras, I remember when I called you and invited you for intermezzo, and I knew how busy you are, etc., etc., and I said, can you make it? And you remember what you replied to me? Probably. Of course, yes. No, you said, let's do it for my Jewish soul. Oh, how nice. You yes. recall that you, you yes, said that? Yes, now I do, yes. So, yes. when you played it, you felt your Jewish soul? Do you remember the tune? I didn't know the tunes because don't don't forget I was not brought up here, but of course it uh, in my s subconscious it does does hit a certain nerve. Yes, wonderful. Andras, mm. many thanks for your wonderful <laughs> Jewish soul as well as the Hungarian soul and the many other souls that you have for music. It's wonderful to. Thank be with you, Eric. Great pleasure. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you.